फैक्टर सी भी आ जो भी आ टी टी को भी आ पेरेंट्स टीचर्स एंड माय डियर फ्रेंड्स इट इज ऑल इन द नेम ऑफ आवर लॉर्ड जीसस क्राइस्ट लेट मी स्टार्ट बाय थैंकिंग माय लॉर्ड फॉर दिस ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी ही हैज गिवन मी टू स्टैंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ हंड्रेड्स ऑफ बिलीवर्स टू प्रीच द वर्ड ऑफ गॉड द होल वीक आई हैव हैड फीवर एंड ऑल द मॉर्निंग्स आई आई वाज वेकिंग अप शिवरिंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ ड्यू टू कोल्ड But today morning when I woke up I thanked my Lord for waking me up without any difficulties The Lord is great He has he has bestowed his grace upon all of us today He has woke waken us in this morning just to come to his presence Let's all thank him once today morning Today I stand on behalf here on behalf of the Matoma Sunday School Samaj. The start of the Sunday School can be traced back to 1780 when Sir Robert Drake began a Sunday School movement in Gloucester for the children of the factories. The formal origin of the Matoma Sunday School Samaj was in the year of 1905. The curriculum of the Matama Sunday School Samaj is based on the theme Transform to Word of God. This curriculum is designed to help the children to confront Triune God personally through the help of the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, guide, and comforter. Sandarshini is a Triune monthly publication. primarily for teachers and parents Tarilugal is a monthly publication of the Samajam for children Currently Right Reverend Joseph Mar Barnabas Episcopal is serving as the president and Reverend George Sharia as the general secretary of the Sunday School Samajam The Charge of Matama Sunday School stands as the, as the largest registered Sunday school under the Sunday School Samaj with over 1900 students and 198 teachers engaged in the teaching ministry imparting the word of God through three sessions that is Friday, Saturday and Monday. The Sunday School sessions commence at 10:30 every Friday. 5 p.m. in Umukoin and 10 a.m. on Saturday with the singing sessions followed by the classes besides the regular classes the spiritual development of the children is further nourished through BBS teen street retreats and children's conventions the memorials competition and the quiz competitions are other platforms which allow the students to dwell on the word of god teachers training programs are conducted to enhance the teaching skills the holy qurbana conducted on every third friday during the sunday school and the english service conducted on every fourth friday are assisted by the sunday school students and teachers the students actively participate to the needs of the society through the my share for mission campaign last year we were able to generously support the running of the vbs in the slum areas of india the talents of our students are identified to the participation in the arts competition explore the talents first program of the uae center and the interchurch competitions teachers parish members and parents work hard to develop the skills in the students this year we also had the parent interaction day and the sambo camp was conducted at the nilakil camp center in india reverend noble matthew has been the first student and teacher of our sunday school who has dedicated himself to the call of the lord during the 40th year of the parish we had 28 students who dedicated themselves to the christian ministry thus the sunday school works at holistic development of the children today i would like to speak on the word
verse which was taken as the gospel. That is Luke chapter 18, verses 15 to 17. Let me take a key verse. Verse 16. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning you have given us. Lord, help these, these people to be nourished in your knowledge, O Lord, to understand what you speak through me, O Lord. Lord, help them to be good citizens of the kingdom of God. Help these children to follow you without any hindrance, O oh Lord. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Amen. Here Christ signifies that we, the children, are part of the kingdom of God. What do you mean we are part of the kingdom of God? We all are citizens of the kingdom of God. Being a heir to the kingdom of God, we have certain rules or codes or ethics as we all, for example, we all live in UAE or in India. We have rules and regulations to be followed. And to follow these rules and regulations, we need to have an understanding about the authority of the nation, about the ruler, about the kingdom. We need to be constantly, for, in, for being in the kingdom of God, we need to be constantly in touch with God. We need to know who He is and have completely faith in Him. We need His guidance, direction and constant monitoring. But as we try to walk in the path of God, we might, the children today might face many hindrances. And I am going to discuss several factors that hinder us from the relationship of God. First point, things that hinder your relationship with God. Worldly pleasure. The children today, as we all know, I don't have to tell you about worldly pleasure. Everyone is running behind the world of what the world gives. We tend to forget what the Lord gives. Mobile phones, gaming, gaming accessories, everything the world gives which God does not approve of is worldly pleasure. Today, as far as I have seen, the kids, the children, are more addicted to gaming than any other substance abuse or smoking such as uh, such things. But when we analyze the time we spent with God and the time we spent for gaming, for worldly pleasures, we can see that the Lord is being pushed back to a certain level that we do not need Him. First John 2 verse 15 says, Do not love the evil world or the things in it. If you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Whereas in Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There it is. We have a problem with holy pleasure, but the Lord has given a solution for it. We have, to trans we have to be transformed by renewing our mind. We need to set a different goal for our mind, the one and only goal that is Jesus Christ. <coughs> Second thing, laziness. The children today are, are very lazy to seek God, to pray, to read the Bible, to go for fellowships. Why is it so? Because they lack the realization of what God truly is. 
we give you a small example. When we drive cars or are in a car, we tend not to wear seat belts because they're lazy. But after something unfortunate happens, just after an accident happens, what do you do? You never forget to wear the seat belt. Why? Because you realize that if you do not put the seat belt, you are going to get hurt. But children nowadays do not have the realization that God is capable of anything. Nothing is impossible to Him. When we have that realization, we will let go of our laziness and be part of God. Reluctance to ask for spiritual help it is another hindrance to be with relationship with God. Even if children know or feel that they are not walking with the Lord, there are times reluctant to talk to people to ask for his spiritual help. We have teachers in our Sunday school, we have actions in our church. But how many of the children today come to church and ask doubts on God or about the Bible? They don't. How many of you children have come to Sunday school and talk about God? They talk about different things. They talk about movies, new songs, new games that released. But just go over to them and ask, Child, well, how is your walk with God? And you see his time. You see that he has no words to explain what God really may, means to him. Do you know why? Because he is scared. Today the children are scared to ask for spiritual help. Because they feel that they are telling others that they are vulnerable. No one wants to be shown that they are vulnerable, right? We want others to see us as strong spiritual people. We do not want them to see that we, are, we do not know the Lord Almighty. We do not want them to see. That's, that's the type of children in this church right now. This is my experience. I've seen people like that. Even I was like that. I was reluctant to talk to people, to ask for help. Because I want the people to see me as a good child who comes to church, who knows all about God. But the truth is, I know nothing. That is the truth. And that reluctance is a complete hindrance for the relationship with God. So that are the things that hinder your relationship with God. And second, people who hinder your relationship with God. There are three types of people who hinder your relationship with God. One, People who do not believe in God. Two, people who proclaim they believe in God, but truly they don't. Three, people in your family. So people who does not believe in God, they always pose a threat to our spiritual growth. It can be your best friend. Maybe someone who you really, really are close with. You never know. But you, know you need to make sure that you stay away from their ideologies so that they do not pull you back away from God. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. That's it. Do not be yoked with unbelievers. If you know that person is an unbeliever and he 
poses a threat to your relationship with God, move away from him. Move away from that person no matter who it is. Because people who doesn't believe in God always pulls you back. They don't want you to believe in God the same as they. Second, people who proclaim to believe in God but actually don't. We can see many people sitting in the front rows of the church for every meeting. But doesn't mean that all of them do not go. As I told earlier, they don't want to be seen vulnerable in front of others. They want to show that I come to church and I know the Lord. People like that give advices to children. And let me tell you, if that person doesn't, does not have God in them, what relevance that advice can be, be for you? It has no relevance. Because the person who gives the advice itself does not know God. There are so many people in our church like that. For example, see, 12th thing I remember, like 12th thing, but it's only in the good year. These uncles and aunties, they come and ask, Morning, 12th day, I live, 12th and the So we say, uh, Uncle, engineering. Oh, engineering? Engineering? What do you call it? What do you call Medicine. But let me tell you, that person will not have any knowledge about engineering or a BPS. They just want to give you advice. They might not know what the child is going through. They simply advise. There are people like that. We need to stay away from them. We need to know what the actual spirit of the God is. We need to know who we need to trust. Then, people in our family. Families are where from the child start to learn about God. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 and 7 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So literally every time we need to talk about the Lord. This is what the Lord has instructed every family member to do. But let me ask you how many of the fat parents sitting here talk about God in their conversations in their house. They don't. They talk about worldly matters. They talk about politics. They might talk about various other things but not about God. Then how do you think the child will get knowledge of God from you? It's very important to have conversations about God in your family life. Let me tell you a story. I had a friend in summer school. I haven't seen her come to summer school since 11th grade. One day I asked her, one Friday she doesn't turn up. The next Friday I asked her, why did you come to church last Friday? She said, my grandma was here with me. So, like after they went out on Thursday, she said, I have to go to summer school tomorrow, so let me sleep. And do you know what the grandmother told her? Well, there is no use going to church. There is no use of praising God. There is nothing like that. And let me tell you, all my friends gathered around her, told, oh my God, that's super cool. They said, man, I do not have a grandmother like that I wish I had. Super cool, dude. Her grandma 
Lord said no to go to church, that's really good. Is it? It's not. Let me tell you, parents, you should take every possible way to make your child grow in spiritual way rather than being a hindrance to your child with relationship with God. With that, I end my sermon. Let me tell all the points I told today. One, things that hinder your relationship with God. Worldly pleasure, laziness, reluctance to ask for help. Second, people who hinder your relationship with God. People who doesn't believe. People who say that they believe but don't. And people in your family. I hope the children who are sitting here today understood what I told. And I really pray to God at least some of them might be touched by this. May God bless us all.